Good afternoon, guys. This is Ed from 65 Fishing coming at you with another one. Today, I'm coming at you with a maintenance video today. I'm going to be installing a NEMA 2000. Uh, I've never done this before. Um, I do all my other maintenance work on my engine. I have a 150 Yamaha. Uh, bulletproof. This is a bulletproof engine. I have no complaints about it. Uh, it served me well for the last three years. Zero problems. Knock on wood, zero problems with this engine. So I do my own oil. I do my own. Um, as a matter of fact, I just changed the water propeller about a week ago. I did it myself, less than 15, 20 minutes to change the water propeller in this thing. Very easy. I didn't make that video because there's a lot of videos out here on YouTube um that can demonstrate that pretty good so there was no need for me to make that video uh but this video i want to make because it's the first time i'm doing my own nema 2000 and i want to kind of like document a little bit of it so as you can see i pretty much got some of the housing i got the cowling off i got some of the through loosen some of the where the wires run through this little housing here I pretty much got the rubber, uh, this little rubber piece here off already. And uh, I just wanna uh, take you through some of the things that I'm doing with it. Um, as you all know, uh, things are getting very expensive nowadays, including maintenance on your boat. And that's why I do a lot of my maintenance. I do my oil, I do my lower end gear oil. I just did my water propeller. So I'm saving a little bit of money. And I do my own plugs every year. I put my own spark plugs in if it's needed. Uh, every year you don't need to put plugs in. I mean, if I take the plugs out, they look good, they're clean, I don't change them. Uh, but I do have extra set of plugs in there that when I do need them, I change them. Um, so I, I wanted to document this uh, NEMA 2000. I thought it would be uh, pretty good to put up on the channel. And uh, I'm gonna take you step by step and how I'm doing things. So right now, I'm going to finish opening this up. I see a place right here to where I can run my run my cord. This is a Lowrance uh, NEMA 2000 hookup. It should hook up to this part here. I'm gonna take the cover off this and make sure this fits before I go any further. So you guys stay tuned. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, I'm just checking that connection to make sure before I get to tearing all this apart that I have a good connection uh, that this part actually fits into that plug. And there's the plug here. So this is the NEMA 2000 here. And it slides right into that white plug right there. And the reason I'm hooking this NEMA 2000 up, guys. It's, it's only obvious as to why I'm hooking it up. I want to be able to see water pressure. I want to be able to see engine hours. I want to be able to see temperature on the console in my Garmin grab. Um, so that's the whole purpose of hooking this up. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I should have had it done three years ago. I didn't do it. Uh, but I really need to keep up with those engine hours now because I've got three years with the boat now. I haven't done a boat review, I need to do that. I got three years with the boat now and I wanna kinda of keep an eye and make sure that I'm doing all of my maintenance when it's supposed to be done every 100 hours. So that's the purpose of me hooking this NEMA 2000 up. Uh, I never did it before. We are finna see if I can do it. Stay tuned. I'll be back with you in a minute. All right, guys, as you can see, I got the wire ran here. Uh, this is the Lowrance Yamaha NEMA 2000 plug. It's a plug and play. It plugs right into this unit right here, right into this white uh, coupling right here. It just plugs right in there, simplest play. I ran it around through the coupling here, through here, through here. Ran it around, ran it around. As you can see, I have electrical tape over this because I had to make some modifications. Um, on this Yamaha, uh, Skeeter Yamaha uh, hookup, guys, uh, I had a hard time running this through there 
I mean, the whole hose is just full of wires and uh, we have cables running through there, fuel lines, everything running through there. And it was a tight fit, a tight fit. So I had to make some modifications on the side over here just to get it through. Ran it through there, through the console. I mean, through the uh, hull of the boat. Like you run your transducer wires or anything else. Like you see, I have my transducer wires running through there, same thing. Run it through there. Run it all the way up to the front. Run it all the way up to my Lowrance. I ran it up to my Lowrance. Uh, my Garmin didn't want to take this unit for some reason. I couldn't get it to work on my Garmin's. Uh, disappointing, but it's okay. I got it to work on my Lowrance, and all I'm caring about right now is data. I want that data. I want bar pressure. I want temperature. I want uh, water pressure. I want all the pertinent data that I need because I plan on keeping this Yamaha at least putting 4,000 hours on this Yamaha before I repower. Uh, I don't have not rich. I don't have money like that. I'm not going out to buy a new boat every year. Uh, so I want to get as much, as many hours as I can on this Yamaha. So let me show you what it looks like on the Lowrance after you have hooked that up. Now I have my backbone connector. It's in the back of this unit back there. I have it secured in place behind here. The whole backbone connector is behind the unit. And I have the power ran here. I have the power hooked to a on and off so that the power can go off to that backbone connector. You don't want that to be a constant power. Uh, it, it said that it may run the battery down. I'm knowing that it will run the battery down because it's taking 12 volts. So, uh, so I hooked it back there, hooked it to a power source that's on an auxiliary that goes on and off. So let me just show you what that looked like. All right, guys, here we are. So this is the setup that I have right now on my Lowrance. I have this configuration right here. I kind of like this configuration because I get my RPMs, I get my miles per hour, I get my engine temp, I also get my fuel percentage, I get my trim, I get my eco, I get the miles per gallon, which is very important to me. I need those miles per gallon. I get the voltage, I get the low, and I get the water pressure. Down here, I get water temp, which I probably will change this. That's not important right now when I'm running, when I'm running the analog, when I'm running these gauges. So I might change this to something else, maybe like oil pressure or something like that. I don't see oil pressure up here. So I may change this to oil pressure, which is really simple. You go into menu, you go into menu, uh, you hit edit, select information, tap on this. Well, first of all, you tap on that, select information, and then I think I want water temp. Uh, no, not water temp, I want oil pressure. So let's go to engine, engine, and let's go to oil pressure and change that to oil pressure. So you see it immediately changed to oil pressure. Uh, change this back to engine hours on the engine, go to engine. hours right here change that one to hours all right so now i have my oil pressure engine hours and all the other things that i told you about so now when i click on the switch boom all of that stuff pops up guys and that's the what i'm looking for right there i have an engine hours when I bought the boat, it was a used boat. I bought it at 190 some hours. And I have, you know, added these hours here. Of course, I'm at 271. So I 
don't change my engine oil every 100 hours. I do not change my plugs every 100 hours. I do it before 100 hours, I don't care. So since I've had the boat, every spring, before I start doing my thing in the springtime with spring fishing, around about February or March, I do all my engine maintenance. I change the oil, I change the lower unit oil, I change the spark plugs if needed, I change the fuel filter, needed or not, I change the fuel filter. I do all the things that you would do in 100 hours. Because like I said, I want to maximize the amount of time I get out of this engine. I want to put about 4,000 hours on this engine before I repower. So that's why it was so important for me to get this data in the console so that I can see these things. Okay, so let me just show you that backbone connector in the back here. I kind of took the bolts out so I can show you guys the stuff. As you see right there is my backbone. That's the backbone for the NEMA 2000. I've got that secured right there. I didn't really bolt it. I just zip tied it to where it would be secure right there, not moving around, things of that nature, the power cord. I got that all hooked up on an auxiliary so that uh, that will be going off and on with the auxiliary power. I don't want that to stay on. I don't want that hooked directly to the battery. So that's how I set it up, guys. Uh, I haven't bolted that yet. I might later on, maybe not. I don't know, I'll probably just leave it like that. It looks secure to me. So that's how I got it, guys. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, bolt this panel back in. As you can see, all pressure here, engine hours here, time, whatever, however you configuration you want to set that configuration, Lorance allows you to do that. I love Lorance graphs, guys. I'm never going to take them off my boat. I love Lorance. I love Garmin too. I think they're wonderful graphs. Each one of them have their own little special thing that I like. So I'm going to keep both of them on my boat. Um, I, I had Hummingbird before. I'm not a favorite of Hummingbird, but I like Lorance. I like Garmin. Those are the two I run on my boat. All right, guys, I hope this video was informative. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, hit the like button. Hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. It means a lot to me, guys. I appreciate it. And until the next time, peace. And I'll see you on the next one.